Hey guys, RC here. We're back with episode 19 of Bullbound College Football. We're going to jump into the off-season stuff, roll the intro, and then let's get into it. All right, so I just advanced the season, and here's our final rating rankings for or ratings for me as the coach: a D in team performance, F's in talent and recruiting, a B for board expectations and prestige, and a C minus overall. You can also notice our prestige ticked up one notch from 29 to 30. Not too bad. We'll have 25 scholarships for the upcoming season. We'll see how that goes. So let's jump into the email and let's start at the bottom. Financial constraints, we pick up an extra $10,000 from the school uh, for our budget. Wake Forest fires their coach and hires Al Alton Daly, who was an assistant coach for Tennessee. Keith Morin has been fired by the Jayhawks of Kansas. They hire Kenny Zuniga, who was in a Virginia Tech assistant. The Aggies, although they made it to the championship game or to the Final Four, uh, they fire their head coach, or he took another job. Uh, they hire Andrew Sims, who was Tennessee's assistant coach. Ball State hires William Lee. He was an assistant at USC. And Auburn has hired Gordon Kimbrough, who was unemployed. Uh, we actually have a job opportunity. Let's see what it is. The Houston Cougars. All right. So this is what I want to do. I want to actually go just evaluate their team. So we're a 30 prestige, right? So if we scroll up here to Houston, they're a 28. They went 2-10 and 10 last year. Now, Houston is in Conference USA. I don't think I want to take that job. I mean, it is a new job, but it's, it's a drop in prestige. I've always found the, this first job that you take, to me, always kind of sets you up for how the rest of things are going to go, if that makes sense. Because I'd be taking a step back. I would be starting recruiting from scratch. I would not have the players that I've already recruited, which probably aren't great shakes, but they're not going to have anything great either. Um, let me look at... That's not what I want. See, I can't get into the stuff here to look at my players. Can I go history? Nope. Nope. All right, so I can't get to that. And you only get offers in the first week like we're at here. You can see here, this is the week job offers. So if I had three or four programs that wanted to offer me a job, I'd have three or four emails. It's not like I can turn... A lot of other games have like a multi-week hiring system. So you know you can pass on a job in week one, and then some other teams may hire coaches, and then you may get new offers in week two. Doesn't happen here. Everything's in week one. I'm going to pass on that. I'm, I'm going to pass on that. So we'll advance the week. I am disappointed. I was hoping for, uh, for something new, but uh, that's not going to happen. And no, none of my coaches are leaving. So I will go and do any coach hiring that I want to try to do. And, you know, I like to sink money into coaching as much as I can afford. Not to, not to the detriment of my recruiting, but I'm always looking to improve my coaching until I get to the higher levels and I've got the best guys that money can buy. So let me go do that. And when we have some more stuff to talk about, we'll come back. All right, we finished our coach hiring. I've hired two new coaches. My offensive coach is actually really good for this level. 
Uh, I'm worried about losing him at some point, but I saw an opportunity to do a minor upgrade to our uh, defensive coordinator and an upgrade to our special teams coach. So let's take a look at our staff. So our defensive coordinator comes over from Houston. Oh, that is Houston. Uh, remember, I switched to Houston earlier, uh, but we didn't take that job. So here we go. So I've got a new offensive coordinator. It's his, a defensive coordinator. It's his first job. So what was good on him is he's got good, you know, th this is the same. The other guy had two greens and a red in development, but he had yellows in, uh, in all oranges, but he was yellow in motivation and game planning. So we've upgraded motivation and game planning. Um, and then uh, scouting and everything else has stayed the same. So it's a slight upgrade. It's the same cost. So if he wouldn't have signed, I wouldn't have been upset. But he does sign. So it's, it's a slight improvement. And then special teams, uh, we were orange and reds. Uh, so now we have yellows and orange. So first year uh, coach, Stanley Escobedo. He's much better at developing. Our old guy was uh, red or possibly orange, but definitely an upgrade there. And motivation, scouting is the same. So hopefully he can actually develop any of the guys that we happen to sign. So I think we've made our coaching staff better. Uh, I'll let you guys take a quick look at transfers just to see if there's any interest here. And there is not. Everything's low. You don't usually start seeing transfer interest till you get into like, you know, the 40s and 50s. And it's, it's a more of a mid, you know, because you got to think it's always the players from the Michigans and the USC's and the Miami's uh, and the Notre Dame's. They're the ones leaving and then they're filtering down to kind of the, the tier two teams, you know, uh, they'll leave Alabama and they'll go to Mississippi state. They'll move, leave USC and go to Cal or UCLA. Um, you know, so things of that nature, you know, they trickle down to the next level of teams. And then those players at those programs trickle down into the mid majors and the, the, you know, to the lower end, the Kansas's, uh, you know, uh, Kentucky's things of that nature uh, in football. So let me deal with this and let's take a look. Where are we at? So we are in a, the transfers is a three week affair. I'll come back, let you know if we got anybody. All right. Well, I actually made quite a few offers more than I kind of wanted to, because you have to remember when you offer transfer players, it takes out of your recruiting budget, whether they sign for you or not. So we do sign two transfer players. All of these guys were low interest. So take a crack at some of them. With a low prestige team, I usually focus on skill position, quarterback, running back. Uh, you know, and again, you've heard me talk. I, I like to build from the inside out. So offensive line, defensive line, quarterback are my three primaries. And then we build out from there. Uh, running back, secondary linebackers. Uh, but we pick up uh, an offensive tackle uh, here in Miller. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and look at, we're going to look at his attributes. Actually, we'll look at this, offensive and defensive skills. So if we sort by run block and pass block, he is by far the most dominant run blocker we will have. And pass blocking, he will be fourth best. So that's where you have to go. Okay, maybe we become a running team, more of a running team with him in there. It's not like he can't block. He's only four points off the pass blocking top, but he dominates at the run blocking, right? The other one that we got is an inside linebacker in Crabtree. And if we look at him, at the pass rush moves, 74 makes him our best pass rusher. Point of attack, he's third best. Tackling, he is second best. Coverage, he is third best. So I think he, and he's six potential. So he's behind Murphy uh, there. So, you know, we got some good, you know, two good guys here. So 
Uh, hopefully we can – now, they can't play this year. Transfers must sit out one year. So this is where we want to come in and we want to see what positions we need. Uh, do we need to look at JUCO players? Um, and, you know, that may be something we want to look at doing. Uh, you know, Kansas, uh, Kansas State built their program uh, from an also-ran to a really good national-level program. Not really in the running for national titles, but, you know, competing, you know, for 10, 12 wins a year, uh, mostly through signing JUCO players. So that isn't a route you could go. It just it, it accelerates everything that you have to do because, remember, those guys are only going to be around for one or two years. All right, let me get into recruiting. I'm not going to go through that, but, you know, we I, I do like to show you guys. Oh, I do have uh, my email guy here, Jonathan Harris. We'll take action on him. And then we'll jump into the recruiting screen. And let's look at our watch list. Sort this by ranking. So he's ranked number 999. So we want to immediately scout him. Recruit him and offer him a scholarship. He's from Pennsylvania, so way far away. Uh, but even with that scholarship, that would only give us four receivers under scholarship. So certainly want to get him. Gives us a top 1,000 player, and that is certainly something that will help us. So just out of curiosity, who's the best quarterback? Uh, not a whole lot there. If we sort by three stars, oh, what's our best three star? Actually, a seven rating, and he's a Juco. I'm going to go after him. He's in Louisiana. Bossier Parish Community College out of Alexandria. And... I don't I don't mind going after fives. So you know what? I'm going to I'm going to do both of these guys cuz I just find it imperative now to get a quarterback. Now, even though I'm offering them and scouting them, I'm burning the money this week. If I come back in week 2 and they've got offers from anybody like this guy. We're not on his top 10. If he's got offers from any of these programs, I'll, I'll drop him next week. I'll pull the scholarship. I'll clear the action. I'll get that recruiting money back, and we'll go after somebody else because you know I don't want to waste that money. But this is just trying to get in on the you know on the ground floor with this guy, and hopefully as a three star, some of these programs won't be interested in him. I have a feeling probably Southern Miss, Tulane, uh, Iowa State might be in after him. So we probably won't get him, but we'll take a crack at it. Let me get through recruiting, and I will be back to go through our recruiting class. So recruiting is done. Let me get my thing where I can actually see. So I've sorted it out by class. These are all of our incoming freshmen. We had five signed players coming into week 17, which is the final week of recruiting. So you can see the bulk of them. Uh, and one, two, three. we ended up with 16 signed scholarship players. Uh, all these ones with no's are walk-ons. And you can see a couple of them have four potential. Uh, a lot of them are ones or twos. But a lot of the guys that we signed are ones or twos. But uh, by far, right now, it looks like we'll have three freshman starters in Glover at wide receiver, Goodman at defensive end, and Garner who's a kicker that we went out and signed and got pretty lucky. He was out of Washington. We also have a guy out of Minnesota that we signed, and he's going to be our backup. Uh, and let's see, two, three, two, four. So I think we upgraded our kicker, which could directly lead to some additional wins this year because you can see that he's already orange. Uh, both of them are orange, so they're already better than the guy we had last year. And we're going to end up cutting him. So, want to just kind of show you these guys. 
Uh, Glover, by far the best. He's got uh, a route running of 49, hands of 61. Uh, he's a speed receiver. We did not get our email player this year. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he signed somewhere else. I don't remember where, but doesn't matter. Actually, it doesn't look like he signed anywhere, so he could have been ineligible and uh, just had to go the JUCO route. So that was interesting. All right, let's see. We've done that. I need to set my budget, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, we've already got the yellow recruiting. You know I like to do the blue, but at the low levels, it doesn't help you as much, and it's not worth the $40,000. So everything looks pretty set, so we'll let that go. Uh, expectations this year, sixth place in the conference. A lean year, try not to get blown out by Louisiana Monroe, the rivalry game that we talked about last episode. All right, offensive philosophy. Let me, let me jump into my depth chart, and we will sort all of these. I do want to look at our quarterback situation. Let's look at uh, ratings. So you can see we've got... Oh, Bowman. Bo Let's do Bowman while I'm here. Bowman, I wanted to... Where do I do that at? Camp roster. Here we go. All right. Bowman, I wanted to change. If I look at him... I trained him in adaptability so he could play other positions. And I don't usually do that unless I want to change them. But if we look at his speed, he's very fast. He's agile, but his arm strength is really weak. Accuracy and touch are very weak. So I want to try to change his position to running back. And it says he'd be below average, but he would be good in the future. His current weight's 201. His target rate's 208. We'll change him, and you see he changes to an orange running back. Does Anderson have anything? Hands are horrible. So yeah, he can't do anything. I may cut him. Yep, I think I am. You have to remember when you're cutting players, you want to stay close to as close to the. Um, the minimum needed or players won't sign for you. So he's not going to do us any good at quarterback. I don't think he's going to change to anything decent. So we're going to cut him. And then Bowman now becomes our best running back. So let's go back into our depth chart. And now we're going to have a fourth freshman starter. Yep. And that'll be, and if we look at him, hands, he's not going to be good out of the backfield. So this would be a guy, if he's playing, we're going to do away with screen passes. No sense doing that. He can't catch the ball. Not normally the guy I would go after, but I wanted a good runner so we could maybe transition into a little bit more balanced attack. So if we look at that, I'm going to go balanced on my offense. Let's go in and check our camp roster for inside linebackers. So if we play a 4-3, we only need one. If we play a 3-4, we need two. I have two that are starter quality. And then I actually have a decent reserve. I'd feel better with four that I could play. But with Crabtree having to sit out till next year as a transfer. And the other thing I would look at then is defensive tackle. 
I really only have two good ones. So one starter, one backup. So I think the three, four is the way to go here. So we'll save that. Let's go ahead. I'm going to do the position changes, get my schedule set, and we'll come back and look at that information here in just a second. All right, we've advanced to the first week of the regular season. So let's jump in and look at our roster. And we'll take a look at all the freshmen. And there you see their current ratings uh, and their current abilities with training and everything that we've done. So quite a few of them have developed into orange players, which I think is a big step forward for the program and the talent level that we have. Still not great, but it's better. You see we're starting to get some five and six players to get into the mix here. <coughs> we are going to have uh, four starters, as we discussed earlier, a running back in Bowman, who's a uh, retrained quarterback that we signed. Glover, a wide receiver, Goodman at defensive end, and Garner at kicker. And we needed a new kicker big time. But let's kind of go through here. I've already updated the depth chart, so that's that. I'm going to go to a the setup that I used last year at the beginning of the year. Hopefully we have a little bit better quarterback. We know we've got a little bit better runner. And so I want to mix some running plays back into things. So we're going to save that. Uh, we've tweaked our starters playing time. So the freshman we ended up the season with last year, he'll be our starter. But one of the freshmen, I want to get him a little bit of playing time. Uh, and at uh, in the early downs, and then we do have another freshman that's got more upside that I want to get some playing time in short yardage situations uh, and third down. So we're going to do that. Ooh, um, I'm going to drop this to 40 for the max field goal just to try to get off on a good foot with the new kicker. There you see the snapshot of our defense in our 3-4. So we have uh, two really strong corners for us, a really strong middle linebacker core, one good outside linebacker, some average players in, the, in five positions. Our only real weakness is at free safety. And over on the offensive side of the ball, we are lacking a little bit uh, on the offensive line, especially in the interior. Uh, we've taken a big downgrade at tight end. Uh, you know, we had Raymundo last year, Raymundo Fleming, and he had he was our number two receiver. But you can see we also have an upgrade at our split end in Halsey, and he is a redshirt freshman. So he redshirted last year. He's a, a average player, three star. And then we also have Tracy Glover who is a true freshman starting on the other wide out. At running back, we've got Bowman, a freshman. Lawrence Charles uh, is a senior fullback, and he's a very good run blocker, which means he could probably pass block decently. He's got better hands than my running back. Now, if we look at our depth chart, you notice who we don't see in here is Emery who was our leading guy last year, our leading receiver, 1,100 yards. Wasn't that who it was? Or was it White? No, it wasn't him. And I think I cut him. I think I cut him because he just wasn't very good. Um, but let's see. Roster. Halfback. Oh, there's Emery. So he was our starting, he was our number one receiver last year, uh, not running back. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's pretty far down the pecking order now. If we go by overall rating, uh, he is uh, second off the bench. So he's our number four receiver, probably number five, because I would be playing Kearney in front of him to try to develop Kearney with that six potential. So uh, he has lost his spot. 
big time. Uh, taking a look at our schedule, we've uh, added Ball State as a road game to open the season. Idaho at home, uh, we're going to play them with a home and away. Uh, Middle Tennessee State, North Texas, Florida Atlantic at home. I think it's crucial we get off to a good start this year. At Florida International, home against Rice, at Troy, and then New Mexico State at home, at Arkansas State. An open week before the rivalry matchup, which is at Cajun Field this year. And then we finish with a non-conference at Akron. And that will be a, uh, let's see, which one? New Mexico State's going to be a home and away as well. The two road games are away only. That way we can book those as home and aways next year. Let me go in and do my playbook, and we'll come back for the opening game of the season. All right, playbook has been adjusted to the start of the season. So basically what I do in the playbook is at the beginning of the season, I will start off with 5 to 10% per play in a whole bunch of plays. I like 10 as a start, so you get 10 plays because it has to equal 100%. Then, as you saw last year, we go in every couple of games, every two or three games, and we reevaluate how those plays are working out. If they're doing well, high yards per carry on a run, high completion percent for a pass, then we keep those. If they're low, then we get rid of them. And then if they're extremely good, then we may take some of the points that we get back from deleting a play, add to those really good plays. If they're only average, then we'll take those and we'll actually add in a brand new play from the playbook. So, you know, first time I may still have 10, 10 plays, 10% 10 per play. But at the end of the season, I may have four plays at 25%, may have five plays at 20%. I may have three plays at 20% and four plays at 10% or three plays at 15%, you know, just... I adjust it depending on the success of those plays. Because if they're successful, the deeper we get into the season, that means we're having a lot of success pretty much every time we run that play. So we're opening up at Ball State. We are five-point underdogs. We've got Smith in at quarterback. We're only going to do the one game this episode because of the offseason. Let's see how we do. And Ball State beats us 26 to 17. One thing I noticed right off the bat, we did not give up a lot of fourth quarter points like we historically did last year. Uh, first downs, we were dominated. Yardage 309 to 417. 21 carries, or 23 carries, but only 21 yards. So not the running that we had hoped for which means I may need to go back to that passing heavy attack. We were only 13 of 35, but at least only one interception. But we didn't run the ball well. We didn't pass the ball well. So neither one of those are good omens. 13 out of 35 for Smith, 288 yards. At least it was a 2 to 1 touchdown to interception ratio. So that's positive. But... If we're going to be, you know, just over breaking even, he needs to be at that 50 to 60% level. Bowman, 10 carries, 16 yards, only 1.6 yards a carry. Not good. Uh, 3.75 for Ruiz. Now, just out of curiosity, let's pull Bowman up. Bowman has a running ability of 67 and an agility of 58. So 67 and 58. Ruiz, 56 and 56. So neither one of those are really good, right? I mean, there's not a dominance for either player. So, you know, for one to be better than the other is a little surprising to me. But again, first game of the season, Ball State was not the hardest opponent, uh, and yet we still lost pretty handily. So that's going to give us something to look at, something to work on. 
Did we have any injuries? Tracy Glover, a shoulder laceration. Uh, he can play this week, so we'll probably sit him and start Kearney, that other freshman at the receiver position. Uh, but anyway, we'll look at that next episode. Guys, hit the like button. Let me know what you think in the comments below about our recruiting this year. And uh, you know, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time. Bye.